Good morning. I forgot to introduce ourselves. We are the Allen family doing our homeschool Bible reading. Um, we are on page three of the story, the NIV version. So we'll pick up there. Um, I have my kids here, so I will be looking at them, but I will also try to remember to look at you. Uh, okay, so page three of the story. This is the account of the heavens, and we're in the middle of the page towards the bottom. This is the account of the heavens and the earth when they were created, when the Lord God made the earth and the heavens. Now no shrub had yet appeared on the earth, and no plant had yet sprung up, for the Lord God had not sent rain on the earth, and there was no one to work the ground. But streams came up from the earth and watered the whole surface of the ground. Then the Lord formed, the Lord God formed a man from the dust of the ground and breathed into his nostrils the breath of life and the man became a living being or a living soul. I want to stop here. We will be moving slowly through this because there are so many good things um, to pick out. So I don't know how long it will take us to work through this entire book. But also Watchman Nee, um, a great man of God, has a wonderful book called The Spiritual Man. If you wanna look more in depth on the three parts of man, um, Cruz, do you know what three parts are, there are? Man was made. Spirit, soul, and body. Yes, yeah, spirit, soul, and body. So let's read that little part again. Lord God formed a man from the dust. So we see him forming man from the dust. He's got the body going. Body made from dust, made, really made from dust and water. Because um, it says that he also took water, the watering, well, yeah. Watered the whole surface of the ground. So the whole surface is wet. So we see him kind of forming a clay figure, the body of man. Then into the body, he breathes uh, the Hebrew word. I think it's Neshima, but I don't exactly know the pronunciation. Um, but it's spelled Neshima, and it breathes a breathing being. So we have the breathing being, the spirit being, that hits the body, the dust, and when the spirit meets the body, what is created? The soul. The soul. So there are three parts. Kale, can you tell me the three parts? Um, spirit, soul, body? Yeah, so just like there are three persons in God, what are our three persons in God? God the? Father. God the? Son. And God the? Holy Spirit. There are three persons in God, but there are also three parts to man so we are made in his image and um, just like God has three persons man has three parts now the spirit life the spirit is the initiator the spirit initiate the spirit life initiates the soul life or the natural life the soul is the source of the natural life just as the I want you to be looking at me right this moment the soul comes and hits the body. This, I mean, I'm sorry. The spirit comes and hits the body and the soul life is created. Those are um, two different lives, the spirit life and the natural life. Those were supposed to exist together, but the spirit was supposed to reign. Um, the spirit was supposed to be like the king, the master of the house, the spirit directs what the soul should do. So the spirit says, let's do this. The soul says, yes, I'll get the body on it. But what happened? The soul stopped following the spirit. This, and we'll come to this part in just a minute. But the soul looked around because the soul is where the will is. So the soul can decide, will I obey and follow what the spirit is saying or will I not? Will I fo follow my own um my, or will I follow what I, what I see around in the natural life? Because the soul is the source of the natural life. The spirit is the source of the spirit life. The spirit is where we have fellowship with God. So right when God formed man, um, man still had fellowship with God. Make sure you're still listening. Man still had fellowship with God in his spirit. And from that fellowship is what should direct the soul, which then should direct the body. 
Um, okay, so, oh, and so originally, God was, or God gave man the opportunity to transform his natural life into a spiritual one in the boundary of obedience. obedience. There is blessing and safety in the boundary of obedience. That's what we always say. Um, and there is danger and cursing when you step outside of it. So if the soul had stayed in the boundary of obedience, then, um, then man could have transformed his his spirit his natural life into a spiritual one. But because he stepped outside and disobeyed, the soul what happened sorry, what happened to the spirit? Because the soul disobeyed, what happened to the spirit? Kyle, do you know? Um the, the spirit um uh, got died. That's right. The spirit died. What does it mean the spirit died? It was no longer active. Um it was no longer with God. It was separated from God to, um, excuse me, to die simply means to be separated from the life source, to be separated from God. And because, um, the spirit was separated from God, it was dead and it be fell under the dominion of the soul and the flesh. It fell under the dominion of the natural life and became a slave to sin. Um, so we just read like one line and that we've already talked for almost seven minutes. Um, so I think we're going to stop there.